I just came off the Young Turks show where I lit into the Democratic Party. Bunch of losers, uh, corporate Democrats. I hate them. They've cost us election after election. They're corrupt. And they lost, it looks like, okay. to a syphilitic clown, total moron, con man, Donald Trump. So Donald Trump was elected the 47th president of the United States of America. And this is how the left wing media reacted. Um, I don't know why they were expecting to win after even a blind man could see that Trump was going to win. Uh, the Democrats had fumbled the bag for years, right? And so there was only one clear path. You know, regardless of whether you're in the Democrat Party or the Republican Party, you should have been able to see that the Democrats were going to lose. But the false confidence that they gave their voters is what is having a lot of uh, people mad today. I've heard a lot of uh, uh, Kamala Harris voters, feminists, you know, just mad. Some of them are threatening to never sleep with a man again, which ironically, uh, that's, <laughs> that solves the whole problem. That means it took Donald Trump to get you to close your legs. So that is good. That is a good thing for the, all of us. So let's see how they react to uh, Trump winning and to Kamala losing. Again, this is, this, we could have foretold this. You didn't need to be a prophet. So... If you lose to a buffoon like Donald Trump twice, what does that make you? We still have an electorate, 70 million plus, that will be voting for a man who said he was going to assassinate for treason the chairman of the Joint Chiefs because he didn't support him on January the 6th, who said just in the recent days he was going to execute Liz Cheney with a firing squad, nine guns pointed and shooting at her face, a man who has said that he was going to shut down CBS because he didn't like how they edited an interview, a man who said he was going to be a dictator from day one, a man who said he was going to terminate the Constitution, a man who said he was going to use the arm Army, and he was going to use the National Guard on his political ally, uh, opponents. Uh, I, I could, I literally could go on all day. And so, one thing about the American media is they like to do the he said, she said game. But if you really look at it, all the candidates have t said things. I mean, Biden had said, if you don't vote for him, you're you're not black, and you know, and a bunch of other things that again, if you cut and chop up. Everything that each politician says, they can come across as the worst human beings, right? We're not arguing that Trump has a loose mouth, but a lot of the things that you're, you're, you're saying he said, you're taking it either out of context or just, you know, chopping off the last few. You know, you have to, you have to take the whole thing in context. You could, it could be the exact words, but in a different context would mean a completely different thing. Right. But regardless, he won. Anyways, the people decided the people decided to vote for him. So you can cry about it as much as you want. But the people de heard all that and still decided to vote for him. That should tell you something about the other candidate. How bad do you have to be as a candidate that somebody who says all these things still wins over you? Then you must be really terrible as a candidate. But like, we move on. And yet you talk to Trump voters and they'll go. He didn't say that. Wait, no, I didn't hear him. And then you say, well, here's the quote. And then they'll go. Yeah. He didn't mean that. So there is a there's something far, far more long lasting than just Donald Trump, the candidate. There is a sort of Russian embrace of disinformation, uh, a, 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 a radical disvaluing, uh, devaluing of truth over the last nine to ten years and a complete ignorance on civics and what the term Madisonian democracy even means, what checks and balances even means, what judicial review even means, what the rule of law even means. How do we as a nation, mm -hmm. even post Trump, how do we reach those Americans who apparently didn't go to civics class, apparently didn't learn the basics of this Constitution, and have just been overwhelmed with disinformation over the past nine years.
I think this is a big, huge, huge part of the story that it's hard to even digest fully at this moment. But you have Elon Musk, who owns Twitter X, whatever we're calling it these days, X, who is a disinformation propagandist and now has a direct could potentially have a direct line to the Oval Office. About this on this set numerous times is that you have a state where you've got a six week abortion or a 12 week abortion. I think theirs might be 12 weeks. Yep. But it's a state where women lost their reproductive rights, where there was a very heavy push to get women to focus on not putting in place, uh, you know, re electing, putting back into the White House the person who was responsible for taking those rights away and restoring them. Um, but that message obviously was not enough to get enough white women to vote. Um, for Vice President Harris, a fellow woman. This will be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way that they interact with the patriarchy. And, you know, God bless Shannon Watts, who has tried to have that. So now we're going to blame uh, white women and the patriarchy together. How do, how do those go together? You're blaming white women and the patriarchy for your candidate losing. That's pathetic. So... If white women voted majority for Trump, that should tell you that abortion was not a big issue for them. Uh, you know, you guys try to make abortion into this huge issue. And yet you tell men that they should stay out of it. And then they stayed out of it. So when they went to their ballot to vote, they didn't think about abortion because you told them their opinion doesn't count. Right. So um, that's why majority of white men voted for Trump. Uh, there was an increase. About 6% more black men voted for Trump than the last time so that's again that should tell you something about um you know how people are fed up with the democrat party and just how they did not think that kamala was a qualified candidate if women who largely voted for biden because of those same reproductive rights if those same women did not vote for trump that uh sorry uh kamala that should tell you how much they really do not want kamala like if if all those same women that voted for Joe Biden did not vote for Kamala, then there's something to be said. Right. So don't just blanket, you know, blame white women and the patriarchy. Why do you always have to mention the patriarchy here? about this on this set numerous times is that you have a state where you've got a six week abortion or a 12 week abortion. I think theirs might be 12 weeks, yep. but it's a state where women lost their reproductive rights, where there was a very heavy push to get women to focus on not putting in place, uh, you know, re electing, putting back into the White House, the person who was responsible for taking those rights away and restoring them. Um, but that message obviously was not enough to get enough white women to vote um, for Vice President Harris, a fellow woman. This would be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way that they interact with the patriarchy. And, you know, God bless Shannon Watts, who has tried to have that conversation. But if people aren't receptive to it, and if people vote more, um, you know, party line or more on race than on gender and on protecting their gender, there's really not much more that you can do but tell people what the risks are and leave it to them to do the right thing. Progressive pocket. You're saying, wow, 65% of the vote, 66 if you round up, that's great. Oh, my God. 73%. And, and the math, 157,000, you know, to 103. Well, again, we got 30% of the votes still to come in, and maybe, maybe the percentages change as well. Maybe all the votes that are out are from the campus, and, you know, and it, it juices up the number a little bit. But if you're looking at... I'm here in Washington at a watch party. There's lots of Democrats here. And I have to say, a lot of them are starting to go home. And there's a lot of sad faces downstairs. I'm with one of those uh, voters now. How do you feel about the election results so far? Honestly, I'm kind of bored. Um, this is America, so... Oh, my gosh. The black woman didn't win. You're bored. Are you, are you worried? Um, worried about America? About Trump winning? Uh, no, uh, it wouldn't be the first time a rich white man win, so it's, it's okay. It's going to be the same as it always is. <laughs> and why do you think it looks like the race is going in his direction? Oh, because of the economy and people don't know how it works. So they just vote for how their purse feels and that's what we're seeing today. Do you think that Kamala will win? Do you think she's got any chance at this point? And she hasn't had a chance since Joe Biden stepped down. Honestly, in my opinion, she didn't have a chance. But uh, 
you know, she can put up a good fight, I guess. That's what we do. <laughs> you don't sound too optimistic. No, I was never optimistic. In America, <laughs> optimism is uh, not recommended. But, um, I mean, hey, we'll live another day. <laughs> so you think that she may not win because she's a black woman? Oh, she definitely won't win because she's a black woman. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. These Democratic leaders are simpletons. They're servants of the donor class. So they go in there like, oh, donor, give me money, please. And I hear, I made an ad. I'm Kamala Harris. I'm full of joy. <laughs> okay, well, well, what did that get you? And they say, oh, Jake, you're too angry. Too angry? What? You think? Um, there, I mean, there's a shift right. And then there's a shift to Trump um, and shifting to Trumpism. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a, a lot of things, um, especially after David talked about looking at counties and, you know, how Trump is gaining on what he did in 2020. And to me, I am, uh, I'm mystified in some ways, uh, simply because we're talking about a twice impeached, four times indicted, convicted on 34 felony counts, former president. Uh, somewhat, that's one bucket. Then in another bucket, you have all of the things he's been saying on the campaign trail that gets to the decency that the woman was talking about in that last report and how she wanted to vote for Vice President Harris because she didn't like that Madison Square Garden rally. Um, I am just, I am mystified that despite all of that, he's gaining support compared to 2020. And it gets back to something I said uh, earlier at some point, one of the hours <laughs> ago, <laughs> that who are we as a country? And we're, we're starting to find out. And I, from what I'm seeing right now, I'm not sure. I'm, I like it. The thing I think is most important to remember is the people who said that he was a Hitler lover weren't Democrats, they were Republicans. People who said that he was a fascist were Democrats. They were Republicans who worked for him. And so it's not, it's not just these elite Democrats over here, you know, poisoning the well. You had a, you had a pretty broad consensus from, the, from Chomsky to the Cheneys uh, from, yeah. you know, that, 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 that was very, very concerned and remains concerned. And so I think it's not just on uh, us to stop calling names. I think it's up, up to him to, as Allison said, with deeds show that he's not going to be those things. Well, now, having said that, how many, what percentage is reporting in North Carolina? 76. 76% reporting, you're down by seven. You're in a world of trouble. Uh, you're like, yes, it matters which counties, but you're still in a world of trouble. Uh, and so much trouble that one of the organizations has already called it. Okay, now let's go to Georgia. Yeah, uh, by the way, Iowa, Iowa has been called by CNN at least for Trump. Iowa called for Trump, so yeah. there goes that nonsense. I'm gonna, uh, like, it, I'm getting revved up here on a significant rant. So, because Kamala Harris is not winning. And the people who thought that Kamala Harris was going to win a landslide are totally wrong. Democrat Congresswoman Maxine Waters, a member of the House of Representatives, for more than 30 years. Um, good evening. It is looking like uh, America has gone for Trump. What's gone wrong? Well, uh, based on the information that we have now, it certainly does look that way. Uh, I don't know. If it should be described as something gone wrong, uh, evidently uh, the majority of basically whites in this country willing to accept a dishonorable human being, someone who has been convicted uh, of 34 felonies, someone who has been openly and brazenly racist, someone who has, you know, talked about uh, his love for Putin and uh, Kim Jong-un and made some statements favorable to Hitler. Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, this is all why you uh, don't like him, but why has America voted for him? Racism is the, the basic point. Now, I know that there will be some support uh, from some minorities, but basically we're outnumbered. We're outnumbered. And it's not about whether or not, you know, people are selecting absolutely based on public policy 
or whether or not there's an elected official who's willing to do what's in the best interest of all of the people. It is about folks who are willing to accept him no matter how bad he is, no matter how dishonorable he is, no matter how brazen he is in his racist attitudes, et cetera. That's what it's all about. People don't like to talk about racism, but the fact of the matter is the majority of his votes are going to come from whites. And that's who has been talking to all campaign about taking the country back, taking it back from whom, taking it back from too many minorities who are doing too well, who are succeeding, who are closing the wealth gap. And something has to be done in his uh, estimation. And so that's what it's really all about. It's not about the economy and all that, you know, people would like to basically hide behind. It's about white versus others. But, you, you know, it's looking possible tonight that Donald Trump has won the popular vote. Are you, are you saying that the majority of Americans are racist? I'm saying the majority of uh, the Americans will buy into anything as long as they believe that somehow they will have more advantage, they will have more ownership, uh, that they don't have to worry about others who will be equal to them. You can call it what you want, but that's the way it is. It looks, um, Congressman Walters, as if he's expanded his base to include more black voters, more Latino voters, uh, more people of color this time round. I mean, not more than Harris, but more than last time round. Doesn't that fight your theory? Well, I don't know. We've got to wait and see. Uh, I don't know what the expansion is. There may be some expansion in the Latino community, uh, but uh, all of this talk about getting black votes, I don't think it's true. Uh, I do believe uh, that there are Latinos who may favor him uh, because they he, they feel that uh, he has the answers uh, to how to be rich, you know, how to be powerful, and how to rule. And uh, this is appealing, I think, uh, to many of them. And so um, I don't know how much he's expanded the base, but I do know this, that his base is huge. It is basically white. Uh, and they are voting for him. Maxine Waters, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, and let me just... Well, enough of that. Um, so that was it. Uh, if you do not vote, I don't feel sorry for you. Um, you should have voted instead of allowing other people to um, decide on your behalf. But um, drop a comment, like, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do again. It's a free world, right? That's why, you know, the election day went so great. All right. See you.